government continues to evaluate protocols guiding reopening of borders. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Monday, June 29th, 2020, I am Rikisha St. Louis. The government of Grenada is continuing to evaluate and refine the protocols that will guide the reopening of the country's borders to commercial flights. That's according to Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. During an address to the nation on Sunday, Dr. Mitchell said so far, chartered flights have agreed to the protocols in place, which include covering the cost of quarantine accommodation, testing before departure and arrival into Grenada. Dr. Mitchell acknowledged that the health and safety of nationals is of paramount importance and adhering to the protocols brought forward will indeed curb the spread of the COVID-19. All protocols may be perceived as rigorous, but they have to be because public health and safety are at risk. We have tested and evaluated the protocols and identified areas for improvement. Therefore, for the immediate future, Grenada will only continue to welcome chartered flights, and these offer greater levels of due diligence with respect to the established protocols, which include testing before departure, testing upon arrival, and agreement to bear the cost of quarantine. He said completion of measures to accommodate commercial flights are being made. At this point, we continue to work on the finalization of protocols before we begin to accept commercial flights. Many are wishing we can remain in the protective bubble that has kept us safe since March and that we can maintain the COVID-free status announced earlier this month. However, this is not a practical long-term option as Caribbean countries may not have reached consensus and when we reopen more borders. But given the importance of tourism, this is generally regarded as one of the critical milestones in the effort to restart economies. The timing, however, must be right. Acting Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin says the RGPF will always be professional in handling each report that is received, irrespective of the individual who makes the report. He was addressing concerns surrounding an incident that occurred in Fort Judy on Thursday, June 25th, which resulted in the death of a dog and the subsequent alleged assault of Evan Smith. During a press conference on Monday, Commissioner Martin said two residents of Fort Judy are assisting police with their investigations. Directly addressing concerns about the matter not being investigated, but referred to as a private one, the acting commissioner said issuing a medical form signals the commencement of an investigation. Over the past two days, we have been witnessing a beast of response that has been challenging for law enforcement in some respects. To date, over the past two days, three persons as a result have been arrested for non-compliance um, with law enforcement and violation of our regulation as it relates to COVID-19. We take no pleasure in having to execute these arrests, but it becomes pivotal for us to maintain law and order. Commissioner Martin said no arrest can be made or no charges can be laid before the medical form is returned. The completion and return of a medical form is pivotal in determining the extent of harm caused and therefore the type of charge that should be brought against an alleged perpetrator. Therefore charges could not be laid prior to the receipt of a medical form. It should be noted further that the police authority allows us for detention of persons in suspected criminal activity for up to 48 hours. Thereafter, 
without sufficient evidence for charges to be laid appropriately, the detained individual will have to be released. Note that 48 hours after the occurrence of this incident, the police was not yet in receipt of the medical form. However, two individuals have since been arrested and charged. The police has since arrested and charged two persons, Sarah Hutton and Donald Kavinga have been arrested for causing harm. They have since been released, however, on bail in the sum of $10,000 with one surety. This offense carries a maximum penalty of $3,000 or imprisonment for one year or both. The other traffic related issues in this matter is still under investigation and a clear determination has not yet been made. Continuing with the news, government has received one million US dollars from the Indian and UN Development Partnership Fund to assist in COVID-19 relief response initiatives in the fisheries sector. That announcement was made on Monday by Minister with Responsibility for Fisheries, Honorable Alvin Dabrio, at a church service to commemorate the 2020 Fisherman's Birthday celebrations. The service was held at the St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church in Guav. And it also recognizes that the capacity of those producing for the local markets is limited in relation to production and marketing infrastructure. So this initiative therefore aims to provide relief for small fishers for loss of revenues due to the inability to export and also to increase the capacity to meet the local demand, demand sorry, for other value-added products. The fisheries sector will also benefit from the extension of coverage of insurance policy for fisher folk from the World Bank. For years, fishermen have died or were injured while earning a livelihood at sea and were not eligible to receive any benefits. Minister Dabrio says the World Bank has agreed to cover the policy for another two years. The World Bank, they, are, they have agreed to extend the coverage of the insurance policy for us for additional two years. Because the policy, I think, is over 200,000 PS, 200 and some thousand dollars. So that has been a good saving to us for the industry. And I want to publicly thank the World Bank for that genuine effort. So the ministries of climate resilience and finance, they are reviewing the revised operational manual and completing progress reports for submission to the World Bank so that we could continue enjoying this benefit. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Climate Resilience and Fisheries, Roxy Hutchinson MacLeish, gave remarks on behalf of Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenard. She recognized that although COVID-19 has caused a reduction in activities to recognize the fishermen and celebrate the successes of the industry, their role in economic growth and development remains significant and must be commended. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Do you still have EC1 and 2 cent coins? If you do, then you have until the end of this month, 30th June, to spend them, exchange, or deposit them at your commercial bank. After 30th June, you will not be able to use your 1 and 2 cents as they will no longer be legal tender. Find them, spend them, exchange, or deposit them at your commercial bank. Act now and receive value for your one and two cent coins by 30th June. Welcome back. The Tongue of Guav, Grenada's main fishing district, has been the center of attraction for fishermen's birthday over the years, but the celebrations have been scaled down this year because of COVID-19. On Monday, the usual church service was held at the St. Peter's R.C. Church, after which Father John George proceeded to the Lance Bay to bless the boats. 
Following the blessing of the board's members of the St. John's Improvement Committee, accompanied by Parliamentary Representative Honorable Alvin Dabrio and Permanent Secretary for Fisheries Roxy Hutchinson, made presentations of hampers to vulnerable and retired fisher folks. P.S. Hutchinson says the ministry could not let the day pass without paying homage to those who gave service in the fishing industry to the country. And so we looked at two categories today. We gave awards for lifetime of service to fisheries, and we also gave awards to the vulnerable fishermen, persons who have suffered health issues within recent times or um, cannot go to fish because of loss of their equipment. Um, and we know that during the COVID period, the fishing industry was really hit hard. And so we thought it was a good initiative to reward those fishermen and to show them that as a ministry, we do care about them, we care about the service they provide, and that we thought it was a good occasion for us to do a little kind gesture to our fisher folk. Honorable Alvin Dabrio says given the present threat of COVID-19, three different aspects were concentrated on this year, religious, awards, and hamper distribution. We concentrated this year on the three different aspects. The religious aspect in which we had the religious service and uh, also had uh, the priest come and bless the boats, the traditional blessing of the boats. So all that uh, happened today because we know that in everything we have to put God first. So we did that. Then the second phase was to honor the contributions made by the retired fisher folks by giving them a plaque. So this was done and this phase here is where we were giving hamper, hampers to the retired fisher folks, so the ones that have made significant contributions and uh, no longer can do so. So this was just our way of telling them thanks and showing our appreciation and gratitude for a job well done. And uh, because they contributed very well towards this industry and uh, we're hoping that we know that this year is scaled back quite a bit but at the same time we hope that this gesture we make would uh, remind people that at least it's fishermen's body we are here to work with them and uh, we're doing so and uh, we're hoping that next year we could resume our normal festive celebrations. Two of the hamper recipients, Elvis Joseph and Osborne Thomas, both expressed gratitude for the goodwill gesture. Since I was about 12 years, I was fishing. I was, I was a original fisherman, all the, all the, since my father's day. I used to go to my father. He taught me a lot. Yeah. I fix net until now. I fix net until now. Like making up net, beading net, <laughs> and all that things. Once I see sea water. Yeah, look forward for our future, you know it. And I think I did a lot from doing future generation to my family and that server. Ten awards were also presented to fisher folk in recognition for their work in the industry. That story just ended the national report for today, Monday, June 29th. Let's recap the top story. Government continues to evaluate protocols guiding reopening of borders. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.